But anyway, today, if I get to the right place, we will, uh, we're going to be speaking out of the Philippians and Matthew. Very familiar text, uh, especially the Matthew text, because last week we done the Beatitudes and was talking about uh, that, and sort of moving into that a little bit, but as we look at the text today, we're going to be looking at a little bit different talk of how, you know, a light that leads people to Jesus. Have you ever thought about how many times we saw a light in the Bible that, that's leading people to encounter God in some way? I think about, first off, you know, the first time I, I really just, it just pops in my head is, is Moses, you know, he's tending the sheep and, you know, you know, you know drawing nine to 80 years old and he's uh, tending his sheep and he sees this bush up there that's on fire and it's not being consumed and he goes up there to see what's going on. He's drawn to God through the light of that bush. Of course, when he gets up there, you know, the Lord speaks to him and says, you know, take off your shoes, you're standing on holy ground. You're standing where God is. You ever think about this now that the Holy Spirit has come to every one of us that has accepted Jesus Christ as Lord? We are on holy ground. Amen. We're on holy ground because he's there with us during that time. We think about just a few years later as they're leaving Egypt, you know, the, the children of Israel were led by a cause, a fire by night and a cloud by day. You know, I think, wow, how that led. And then I think of later on when Jesus was born, there's a wise men that come and, and follow that little star. Follow a star heading to, 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 to the place where Jesus lay. Uh, so we've got so many instances of that, uh, of how that light is, is, is used in the scriptures to bring people to, into the presence of God. So we're looking at that today, a light leading people to Jesus. If you would, if you got your Bibles, your telephone, or your tablets, whatever you're using, if you would like to turn to the Bible to Philippians chapter 2, verses 14 through 16, and follow along with me as, as we read, and then we will move right into Matthew chapter 5 after that. Do all things without complaining and disputing, and you will become blameless and harmless children of God, without fault, in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation, among whom you shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life, so that you may rejoice in the day of Christ that I have not run in vain or labored in vain. Now we move into Matthew where Jesus is speaking to the multitude on the Sermon on the Mount and he's just finished the Beatitudes and remember he starts off the next verse that I didn't put in here is that uh, uh, about you're the salt of the earth. But then we see here that he speaks about that light. It says, uh, uh, in Matthew, he says, you're the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a candle and put it under a bushel, but on a candlestick, and it gives light unto all that are in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Oh, wow. You know, he's talking about that light, that you are you're the light that can lead people to Jesus, is what he's saying here. He's talking about that you, he, you're a light to represent, to call people to into the presence of God. One of the activities I like to do at camp, and I know that Gary used to do it a lot by taking the campers up on, up on the basketball court where there's no lights around. And just let everybody just that he'd take and let them lay the blankets out and just lay down on that concrete and look up into the sky at the stars. Because without, the, without the, all of the lights around, you can see those stars so clear. I've been to Wiseman View with campers, and I think the Converse went to Wiseman View after dark one night. And if you get out there on that rock that sort of sloped up there, and you just look up and no lights around, all you see is the beauty of those stars, the creation. Some of those stars are, are, are literally stars, like our sun. But some of them are planets just reflecting the light of a star somewhere else on them. We see that in, in that thought. And so I think of that how that that in <coughs> Jesus, you know, and that we are called to be one of those stars and to look into it. 
But there's four points that I want to bring out on it that about this thing. That a light, first off, a light is brighter in the darkness, isn't it? In the blackness of things that are going on. In Philippians 2, 15, it says this. Paul describes the readers as in the midst of a crooked and perverse generation. A lot of times we curse the, the place where we're at. The evilness of it. I, I went to New Orleans one time, and, I, and I've been to a lot of places that I thought was mean. But I've never been to a place like New Orleans that I thought was just evil. And that place right there, you know, it's all kinds of evilness there. I mean, every corner seems like it's got a voodoo place. But anyway, that you look around there and, and you go to places like that, but God is saying that your light will shine so bright in that darkness. That we are to be, you know, when we stand in on God, standing on the principles of who God is, our light will shine. His light will reflect off of us and in through us to a world that needs that, needs to see Jesus Christ as Lord. You know, I understand that a jeweler, yeah, I've, I've never, I've only bought one diamond in my life, and that was when I was just a young person proposing to my wife. And and matter of fact, the, the silver around that diamond, diamond is bigger than the diamond, so it's real small. But anyway, that's the most I could afford at the time. <coughs> but anyway, we, we see that diamond. If you go and I understand, if you pick out a diamond to have it placed into a ring, a jeweler will spread those diamonds out on a piece of black paper so that the, the luster of the diamond will show forth out of that. It's nothing taken away from it. So when, when we are in this world, you know, and in the midst of the struggles of this world and the pain and the suffering that's going on in this world and the evilness of this world, of this, this perverse generation that we're in, that we ought to be that light that, that is there and it's shining forth in a powerful way to where people want to see and want to know what's going on. And Philippi was a, was a, had a Greek Hellenistic background in it because it was Greek to begin with. And then it was overlaid with the Roman customs. And of course the Roman had the Caesar was their God. And, but it was a place of multiple gods. But it was so small as far as the Jewish belief in there when we look at Acts, we find out that when Paul visited there, they did, there was no synagogue. They had to have 10 men uh, to have a synagogue in a town. And so they went to a place of prayer. There's where he met Lydia. And we see that, 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 that he goes to this place, goes to a place that is dark as far as what you think of a godly place that, that believed in one true and living God. So he goes into this dark place and he begins to share what God has given him. The light of God reflected through him as he speaks to these people. And he shares the good news, the truth of God's word. The truth of, of how that Jesus Christ was the promised Messiah that was talking about in the Torah for those that were Jews there. That it lifts up Jesus Christ to a people and they begin to see that and there's a church that is birthed out of that. Have you ever thought that there was a place where, you, or the place where you work is dark or evil? Or possibly uh, you're the neighborhood, a neighborhood. I know that there's some places in Winston-Salem that uh, you don't want to walk after dark. There's some places that, that are there's some real dark places. I know that years ago that there was one place on the eastern side of town where uh, some friends that used to work with Marty at the telephone company told me you could just walk around and see needles spread behind the dumpsters, you know, where the, the drug addicts and all of that would, had gathered in. And I know that there's some dark and evil places, but God tells us that when we're in those places, that is when our light is going to shine the brightest because we're going to be a contrast to that. When we're following the Word of God, when we're following God, filled with His Holy Spirit, anointed of Him in such a way that people <coughs> see that it's what is going on. Matter of fact, and when we look at Matthew, it says that a, that a city set on a hill cannot be hid. A light, that light cannot be hid as we go into the next point. That light cannot be hid there. Jesus talking to the multitude, and you know, He said it in Matthew uh, 4, 5, 14, that you, you know, it's not going to be hid. 
Remember the story of, story of Gideon? I like that story. You know, that uh, he's called to fight the uh, Midianites and the Amalekites and the people of the east. He's called to fight these people. And so he gathers an army. And of course, God keeps saying, look, let's cut this army down. You've got too many. They're going to try to claim the glory of it if they win. Now, let's get them down to a certain point. And he gets them down to 300, and God says, okay, you got the right number. And I'm paraphrasing. Y'all know it's a lost translation. But anyway, we see this, and what are the weapons that those 300 soldiers took? They had a sword in the hand, one hand. They had a pitcher in the other. And inside that pitcher, they had a lamp. And what were they told to do? They surrounded the, 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 the multitude of, of trained military people. And they were told that when you hear the sound, it says, I want you to, to, to blow the trumpet, break the pitcher, and the light's going to shine. And say, see that shout out to them. And what happened? They didn't have to fight a single one of them. The people fought themselves out there. Why? They broke that lamp, that pitcher. <coughs> and in the midst of that darkness, there was a light that shined. A light, even a small light in the midst of darkness, chases, well, darkness flees in the midst of light, doesn't it? Darkness flees and it does the same thing. The implications in Matthew chapter 5, 15, 16, it says, says is about being hid under a bushel. It says no man lights it, puts it under a bushel. Is the implications there is that we can't hide that light. Y'all know that? That we can hide that light. And I think that might be what we're talking about, where the Bible says, quench not the Holy Spirit. You know, quenching means to put out something, don't it? You know, that means to, 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 to put out a fire, to quench a fire, or to, to put out, uh, you know, to quench a, something out, put it out. But we see that, that they said, hey, it, that's possible. We don't, God said, don't do that. Don't put it under a lamp. We have that possibility of hiding what God is. Yeah, I heard one person say that, uh, that uh, a preacher called it that you were a secret agent preaching uh, Christians, that you didn't want nobody to know. You was a spy Christian. Yeah. You didn't want nobody to know who you were. Tried to blend in to the crowd. You know, I think we're tying us out from that. I think we blended into the crowd too much. Amen. We're trying to bring the world into the church too much, I believe, too. Because we are into a situation to where, where we need to stand so firm that that light, we need to take that bushel and throw it to the side and let the light of God shine in this community and every word that you walk in that place. If, it's, if you consider that place you work, a place that is evil, then we need to, to be able to let that light shine in that evilness. The star leads the way to Jesus. You know, we mentioned about the about how the, the wise men followed that star to Jesus. And they come to Jerusalem first and want to go to the king. You know, isn't it amazing that people go to a to a person of authority and higher powers like that? When I mean, they're looking for the wrong thing. They go to the wrong place looking for Jesus sometimes, don't they? People go to the wrong places looking. But we see that here that 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 uh, that that the wise men, when they left Herod, they went and followed the light. Said so the light led them to the place, or the star led them to the place where Jesus was. Where Jesus was. I believe that God wants us to lead people to the person of Jesus Christ. Amen. I don't believe that that's just the preacher's job or the evangelist's job or the missionary's job. I believe that every one of us, when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, that you are a missionary. Amen. You're a missionary wherever you're at. You may not go to Africa or you may not go to, 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 to an Islamic country and be in fear for your life, but you know, you're a missionary right where you're at. Sharing the love of Christ 
in, in that abundance of who he is. In Philippians 2, 14 and 15, read now the NIV, NIV says, do everything without grumbling or arguing so that you may become blameless and pure children of God without fault in a warped and crooked generation. Then you will shine among them like stars in the sky. I like that translation on that particular one through, through that verse for myself. I like it. I, I think it's so descriptive, you know, because, you know, when the world looks into the church and they see that we're grumbling about what we're doing or we're arguing amongst ourselves, they're not seeing the, the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. He's calling and said, don't do that sort of thing. I want you to, to not do that so that you become blameless and pure that when people see, they can take it, you know, they can, can accuse you of something falsely, but they see your good works and it doesn't change. Wow. Then you will shine like stars. You will shine. You will be leading people to it. But then I, the last point of it is how will people recognize that light? I think we get a little glimpse of that in this, in this today too. I think we get a glimpse of it. When people see the church is not complaining and grumbling and disputing among one another, then when people see that we love one another, by this shall all men know that you're my disciples by the love you have one for another. In other words, you know, when the church, the role of the church or the role of a Christian is to show the world what the world would look like if the whole world was Christian. You get that? That's our role. That if we live a life that shows that example, that this is what the world would look like if everybody knew Jesus Christ and the following of Jesus. When the world sees Christians walking blamelessly and harmlessly, there is a sharp con contrast to that crooked and perverse generation world with it. As Dan was talking about this speaker of the house from Louisiana a little bit last night about how that that he stands as a stark difference to a lot of the people that are in the in Congress. And I think that that's where we need to be. We need to be able to say, thus saith the Lord. Amen. That God said it. Whether you believe it or not, that settles it. Amen. It don't matter whether you believe it, because God said it, that means it. That's it, that. We look at that, and when we think of it too, that when Christians recognize, when non-Christians recognize that a Christian faith is not based on your environment, but on the true and living Logos Word of God. Amen. When they see that it's not based on, on, on our environment, when I say environment, I don't mean that we're talking about the streams now. I'm talking about the problems that you're in. The situation, the struggles of life that you're walking through, when they see that, that you don't have to be in a, in a blissful state here on this world to have peace and to know Jesus Christ and to have faith and your faith stands. When the struggles of life come against you, that is when our faith shines the brightest. That's when that darkness is there, isn't it? Yeah. That, that in the midst of that struggle, that people see that your faith is strong no matter what. I've said it here before, and I said it last night uh, in, our, in our little study, Bible study that we had, that, that people don't care what kind of problems you're going through, but the non-Christian world is looking to see how you go through those problems. Amen. They're watching it. They're doing it. And part of the way it says, when they see this, that it's not based, but it's based on the living word of God, you know, because our faith is built on a foundation that cannot be moved. That foundation, you know, just like the, 
the house, the house built on the sand, the house built upon the rock. When the storms of life hit, when our feet are on the foundation of Jesus Christ and his word, then we can stand through those problems. It don't mean we're not going to have problems. What it means is that we're going to be there strong in the midst of the problems. Amen. We can stand in that. I promised I was going to use this scripture, but they led me into sharing part of the message last night. But this right here is a, a song. I anchor holes. Y'all all know that song. I bet. It. But I'm not going to sing it. Don't, don't worry. The anchor holds, though the ship is bad. The anchor holds, though the sails are torn. I have fallen on my knees as I face the raging seas. The anchor holds in spite of the storm. That is what we're talking about here. They see what you're going through and they say, look, when Loretta's going through this struggle, she is able, her faith is not wavering. When Tim fights that battle and gets a miraculous cure, he's not worried about that. He's victorious because of whose foundation he's standing on. Amen. That is the type of faith that draws people to them. When the non-Christian world asks us for the reason of that hope, Peter tells us that we are to be yeah. That sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and always be ready to give a defense to everyone who asks you a reason for the hope within you and with meekness and fear. I love the adding of that weakness and fear at the end of that also, don't you? you know, that we're bold enough to say that this is the reason we can have hope. This is the reason we can have hope. We can go back to the, that Jesus Christ is the reason. His word is the reason that I can, can trust him. Because everywhere you look at his word, it, all the prophecies have been fulfilled. That it, and they, so I can trust the ones that haven't been fulfilled yet, that they are going to be fulfilled. Amen. I think of it this way, too. I'm not one to talk about uh, prophecy much about end time prophecies. I don't talk about that much. But you know, one of the things I'm sure of, I'm sure that just as sure that Jesus, that it was prophesied that he would be born in uh, Bethlehem, that he, the prophecy of him coming again is true. I know it. It's going to happen. I don't know when. You don't know when. The angels of heaven don't know when. But I know it's going to happen. That is a promise. And we know we can trust God to fulfill all of us. And then I said four points. Let's add a fifth. How about that? Because I didn't count. <laughs> what is the result of reflecting the light of Jesus? In Matthew 5, 16, I think it tells us that. It says, Let your light so shine before men And see your good works and glorify who? Your Father. When you're following the teachings of Jesus, you're not trying to earn something. You're trying to display something. You're displaying who you serve. And when they see you following that, you know, and see that you're solid on it, and see these things that they had seen, they can trust God. And they can ask, you know, who is this God? When we are doing the reason that that happens, people see what we are, how we live, and they say, I want a little bit of that. I remember talking to, well, I, I told y'all about Mike and his alcoholism. And when he was drunk that day, and I was talking to him about it, he says, Wallace, I want what you got. I said, you can have what I got easily. And I shared with him the gospel of Jesus Christ. He accepted Jesus Christ as Lord. Uh, and I went on telling him, he says, but you know something? You need to be in a church 
because that's where you're going to get your build up. You need Christian brothers and sisters not only to edify and build you up, but you need Christian brothers and sisters to hold you accountable. Don't you? Amen. You do that. Yeah. You need that. Pretty bad. We all do. And I said, you got to get not just to attend church on Sunday morning, but you need to be there and take part in it. It's not <coughs> you can. We are like that planet that we started off talking about. The sad, in that dark and perverse generation, reflecting the light of Jesus Christ. That's where we are. That's what God has called us to be. And he charges us and he challenges us not, not to put a bushel on not to try to hide it, but let it shine. Let it shine, let it shine. What's that? This little light of mine. I'm going to let it shine. You know, it goes on down and says, hide it under a bushel. No. I'm going to let it shine. You know, God is telling us, let the light of God reflect in your life in such a way that it leads people to Him. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you. Lord, I thank you that we all, if we look at ourselves close enough and deep enough, we can acknowledge that we can improve. We can get the something out that, that needs to be got out of the way that that reflection of you shines brighter in this dark and perverse generation. This generation needs you, Lord. And you want us to be a part of that plan to draw them to you. Help us, Lord. Empower us, Lord. Holy Spirit, anoint and fill to the uttermost to where people see you and us. And give us the boldness. To speak truth in a world where truth is so hard to find because we know that your word is true. Thank you, Lord. Be with us now. For it's in the name of Jesus.